Okie doke. And could you transfer host control to me temporarily, please? Of course. Um, let's see. How do I do that? Go to trainers, and then you can quickly. So people, trainers, and then you can transfer it to me. People, trainers. Ah, gotcha. Transfer session control. Perfect. Training now. Great. Thank you. Okay. Domino the Cat, welcome. Dennis Cormier, welcome. Alejandro Miller, welcome. Giannis Book. Selhomar Lopez del Arujo. Probably butchered your name, I'm sorry. Welcome. Roth, Black Knight is here. AK, the cat. And he's requested to speak, approved. Come on up. Can you... Can you guys hear me? Are we good? Yeah. Hey, AC. What's up? How you doing? Doing pretty good. I'm um, still recovering from COVID, but what it is, what it is. Um, a lot of different things going on with projects. Um, and we have yeah. a lot going on with Somi as well, too. So. Yeah, yeah. I know there's a lot, a lot happening, so... Where did you get that hat? Uh, it looks like Coca Cola. It looks like the way they wrote the Coca Cola logo. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of off that style of the old Coke uh, logo. Except yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Welcome everybody. Um, we're just getting set up here for the AMA. Thanks for joining. Um, just waiting for more people to come in, but. We will get started momentarily here. Welcome. We got the Black Knight is in the house. Roth, Selamar, John, I'll be right back. Dennis, Alejandro, Domino, Jatin. What's up? <laughs> Vitless. Welcome, everybody. So me, June. 2022 AMA. By the way, I got the copy, my copy of the crypto magazine that Somi is featured in. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. So I had ordered my hard copy off the website. So if you guys haven't gotten this, super cool. Uh, I love it. Apparently, um, this magazine is flying off the shelves in everywhere. It's, it's, uh, offered at um at a faster distribution some than some of the major magazines in the world it outsold entrepreneur in in europe all over various locations uh, yeah i talked to nathan um I, I asked him if he wanted to come on he said he was too busy he's, he's busy yeah um, they're getting right. ready for their next one their next uh, publication but we'll be featured somi's going to be featured uh from here on out and our article actually came in at page 105. Um, I don't know if you can see that. Can blockchain save social media? And then the next page, we had a two-page spread with the rest of the article and um, our advert there. And then later on, we have another one on, I guess that's page 125. So uh kind of cool great magazine great 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 stuff happening yeah we're i, I was up in nathan too dealing with uh getting projects ready more projects ready for the magazine as well and um also uh some some other interviews that he wanted to do um just so everybody's aware i'm the one who who got coffeezilla then and most of the interviews in that mag. Um, Absolutely, yeah. No, I know you were instrumental in bringing in a lot of the uh, partners and brands, and um, so. And I'm, I'm really thankful that we could be featured in there moving forward because uh, Nathan gave us such a 
such a good deal to um, to just have a long term relationship, and yep. we're really yeah. uh, really thankful for that. So yep. Yeah, Nathan. Nathan is a, a friend of mine, and and, and J Man's from uh, Crypto Street Squad. Yeah, I saw an article in there from J Man too. Yeah, he's gonna be uh, he's gonna be writing um, for them um, monthly now. Uh, so it's awesome. I saw that. Yeah, he'll be vetting and writing. So, uh, Philip, what happened to our our uh, AMA presentation? Are we ready to broadcast? Uh, no, not yet. Oh, okay. All right, so. It's being a butt. Uh oh. We have a, a new system, guys, with our presentation. We use Zoho for the kind of presentation software, live stream, and also for our CRM and stuff like that. It's all kind of one. Uh, it, it's a nice suite of services, but they switched over to a new kind of system that we're not completely up to speed on yet well uh, that and for some strange reason it doesn't want to broadcast the slides on full screen hmm can we just broadcast it uh now nah, trainer central doesn't allow you to embed it right now after it's open it's weird hold hmm. on i'm gonna send you the slides chris i want to see if you can go full screen maybe it'll let you do it Oh, okay. Here, I am uploading it to you now to the finalizing channel. Okay. And I'm going to set you back as host. Do I just share my screen maybe? and? Yeah, so open PowerPoint and then just share your screen. Okay. I will do that. Let me show and We'll see over. if it goes to full screen for you. Let me go... Open. Here it comes. Okay, bear with us, everybody. We're just getting set up here. Just a few technical issues, but I should be able to get this shared. Um, let me go ahead and share material, right? Or a screen share, actually. If you have share material, that could work, too. Though that might take some time, you can try doing screen share. Okay. I guess we shall. I hear a cat in the background. Yeah, <laughs> she's. <laughs> She's being little Miss Grumpy. I was gonna say it doesn't sound like a happy cat either because of this. Yeah, I can hear. I can hear that. She's being grumpy. Okay, it's thinking about sharing. There you go. There we go. Okay. Well, let us. It just loaded on. Okay. It was, it was it still loading. Go full nice screen, and I will. Okay, so I guess we have a, a nice full screen or somewhat full screen um, uh, slideshow, but you guys can all see it. Yeah. Welcome to the SoMe AMA, June 2022. Thanks for bearing with us while we got uh, things set up. So um, I would just want to say one thing for all of yeah. you guys who are saying that it's too small or whatever the case may be. If you hover your mouse over the, the screen share portion on the bottom right hand side, there's a little like cross with arrows. You can click it and that'll go full screen on your own computers or your device. So for Chris, he's where he should be. So he doesn't need to do anything. Mm -hmm. But for everybody else who's viewing this, if it's too small for you or it's not full screen enough or whatever, just hover over the center part of the screen where the black part is. And then on the bottom right, you'll see this little cross that looks like four arrows and a cross. And just click that and that'll go full screen for you. Okay, thank you for that, Philip. Appreciate that. So, uh, moving on to our slide two for our agenda, we have a project update. 
And we're going to be talking about the development update, the power boost, the live video, the mobile app update, the marketing update. And then we'll go into our AMA, ask us anything round. So as far as the project goes, um, you know, the, the team has been working hard this last month, um, not only on the development front, the developers are, have been working incredibly hard. Um, but on the investment front, obviously, I've been handling that and continuing to to just work through our investment round. But uh, that's been really uh, quite amazing. Uh, we did mutually sign a term sheet with a $3.2 billion fund for the $50 million investment into our SME token. And so that's basically um in process just taking some time uh because that's a little bit different from a traditional equity investment obviously and uh so that's still that's still in process but both parties have signed the term sheet and we're working through that and then on the um the other investment news been basically um, meeting with other investors because we're still in our series a for equity round and that's been going really well. We actually I pitched in front of a big uh, fund here where I'm based last week uh, at the Silicon Valley Bank, and we were one of five companies featured there. So that was super cool. Um, additionally, uh, as far as like working with several level one exchanges for our token, uh, working, I know Phil's been working with our um, team to wrap our SME um, for the Hive Network. And so we're getting all of those things in place um, and several partners who are, you know, spinning up support for Hive uh, for us, allowing conversions of our tokens. So we want people to be able to just have that flexibility once, um, you know, once they start earning the rewards and once that liquidity starts pouring in to, um, you know, to our SME token. Um, I've already talked about the investors and so let me read through this. Sorry. We just kind of cue this up. It's been, so it's been a banner month. Basically we've, we've had a lot of progress with uh, everything from development to investment and uh, we're super excited um, in terms of like development and features. Partnership meetings power too. Boost. A lot of partnerships What's that? going on. I said huh? a lot of partnership meetings going on. Okay. Yeah. A lot of partnership meetings going on. I know um, AC is always, always uh, queuing up partnership meetings and um, you know, we're just, you know, and then the, obviously the crypto magazine was the recent one, which was, was really huge. And that's ongoing because we're actually getting ready to publish in that one again. Um, the power boosts are here on the development front. So we finally are going to be releasing the power boost. So you'll start to see those show up. Um, the development team is slightly behind. Um, they've been working very hard, but they found some, you know, just some bugs as usual that they had to squash. So we're just getting ready to get the word from them. But we're literally hours away from them giving us the word to retest. And then we'll go in and retest to make sure everything's clean. And we'll push all these updates into the, the production server. So you should... You will see this this week inside of production. You'll see a new tab inside of your wallet that says Power Boost Packages. And basically, um, any package that you buy just makes it super easy for, for you to get your um, SME power and Hive power. And it's all in one basket. So as you buy any package, it combines both. It gives you the power so you, you can instantly increase and, uh, whoops, and increase and, and uh, power up your voting power. So uh, the packages range from any anywhere from $20 from a micro, and it goes all the way up to a massive package for like five grand. So um, you guys can, can go anywhere in between, or um, I know some of our partners that we're allowing um, are going to be sharing to their network. So as we get this up and going, that's really our strategy for growth is that we want our partners that we've pre-approved to be sharing the um, power boost um, partnership links and and then they get a little piece of the the revenue for selling a package and everyone's happy and then their users come in and they power up and what we do is we actually put 30 to 70 percent of the the 
swipes back into the SME token. So that combined with our institutional investor and any other you know interest that we have um, on the SME side is going to be quite good for you know the community. So we're super excited to be releasing these and uh, finally at that that point. Um, live video. So we have live video, live streaming. Um, we're super excited. Uh, there I was uh, showing the crypto mag and um, you know we're, we've been doing lots of testing, but you guys will see this feature in now and you'll be able to live stream. And uh, once we get the live stream done, um, also we have video calling with that and then we'll start working on the short videos and the video uploads right right after this. So that's kind of our next plan to integrate those features. So everything is coming together. Um, it was a lot of work, obviously, to get the the video features in, but um, we're really happy to be able to have the uh, the live video streams available. Um, they won't be instantly monetized, so that's the only things that we have to do some additional work and safeguards so that as people start to earn from their live videos that um you know that they're not abusing it and just like you know setting up a live stream and not doing anything and then trying to just you know collect or kind of game the system so there's certain safeguards and things that we have to do and put in place for the live stream features but um it's a really nice system uh, we actually ended up using a partnership that we'll be announcing um, shortly, we will be announcing with our partner, but it's uh, the same company that an app called Clubhouse uses. We're using that same technology provider that helps us leverage their infrastructure. And of course, we're using it for not only audio, but video as well. Uh, the mobile app and progress. Mobile apps are really coming along quite well. Um, we have her most of all features thanks philip <laughs> little typo there we have we have most all of the features on web and they're done within the mobile apps so um basically we had our web development that got ahead of our mobile apps for a time as we took the apps out of the app store and just focused on that web and so what our strategy is now we're updating the apps and getting them all up to speed exactly as the web features are. And then from there, we're gonna just keep everything in sync from then on. So whenever we release something on web, it gets released on mobile at the same time. And we're gonna keep our web and mobile teams in sync. So we're super excited that the mobile apps are pretty much ready. Um, they won't have all of the, I, I think, what features won't they have, Philip, for the uh, the MVP? Because we're going to release them in the app stores pretty quickly here, I think by the end of the month. But they're not, they're not going to, I don't, I think they'll have the power boost, right? Um, so probably power boost and video will be missing if we release them now. But in the next few weeks, if we release them, they'll have power boost and then they should have video by the end of next month. Okay, so we may end up releasing them without the power boost and video, and but everything else will be updated, so you'll be able to use the app as normal. Um, you just won't be able to live stream yet from your app. Uh, but I can say that the mobile web, whenever I go to mobile web, because I'm already logged in, it has all the features and it's responsive, and we made it as a progressive web app, which means it works perfectly fine on a mobile web device. So if you guys want to use that in between now and then, you'll have all those features and it's uh, it's super easy to use that way. So um, whether you wait to, to get the full release by, I think that's at the end of July or the temporary release without power boost and live stream, but we're still going to release the apps updated in the app stores I believe, um, before we have all of those other last two features updated into it. So we're really excited, but the, the team is making uh, massive progress there. And then um, our marketing um, updates, basically, we kind of already talked about the fact that we have L1 exchanges that we're working with and, you know, kind of pairing the token. And there will be marketing surrounding that, obviously, where, where we do co-marketing. Um, but now we're, you know, starting to really 
get ready to activate influencers and partnerships where we've asked um, our partners to, to re-engage. So like one of our, uh, our influencer partnerships are the team that built an app or promoted an app called DraftKings. And DraftKings, as you know, ended up going public. So they were pretty much their network of influencers really took that app to the next level. And so we're really excited to re-engage with them and get them ready to start promoting again um, for Somi. We just want to make sure that everything is going very smoothly and working as well as possible before we start activating any of our major, you know, influencers or relationships um, like our partnership with Skrill, who has 70 million wallet holders. So that's a heck of a lot of people. And we just want to make sure that as we activate this, um, that we are doing it when the system, you know, we shake out any any of these uh, launch bugs and, and things like that. But we're working as hard as possible to, to do that. And um, we're also bringing on a dedicated QA team. Uh, I know that's not a marketing update, but that's going to help us with um, just getting things released faster and making it cleaner so that our, our marketing people can do what, what we've been wanting them to do. Um, we also hey, hey, are... Hey, hey, QA is on the next slide, buddy. Oh, yeah, all on development. Sorry. <laughs> um, I'll get to that. I'm jumping ahead a little bit. but uh, Chris and I also met with Viral Nation. Um, and eventually, I mean, Somia will be onboarded into Viral Nation, which is the number one influencer marketing agency. And we have uh, connections to literally every influencer that you can think of. Uh, we've done yeah. massive campaigns for TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, you know, um, yeah. all the big social apps, uh, Google, the all the all the big ads that you see for Blizzard and Activision, um, especially the the new Diablo campaign on mobile. That's us. Um, yeah, they did uh, some for PUBG too. I think they yeah, did something pretty yeah. big for PUBG. PUBG, Call um, of Duty tournaments, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Viral there. Nation is pretty much the one of the biggest ones, and uh, we're really, really excited to be working with them. And again, that's because of AC, who is actually connected deeply with them, and uh, bringing in the uh, these massive partnerships. So we're basically getting them some information right now about, you know, about the, um, it's just a, a quick slide for their influencers so that they can just flip through a few pages and see everything at a high level uh, for signups, connecting to Hive, blah, 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 and then how to monetize, and then basically um, generating the links. So we basically, on uh, Somi, you have a uh, influencer kind of application at the, at the lower left where it says become influencer. You can click that. You can you can fill out an, uh, an application. And then um, basically when you're approved as a partner, um, you generate this tracking link. That tracking link is integrated in with Somi, with our tracking system and with our CRM. So it's very scalable and influencers can just share that we have pre-approved content that the marketing team has been focusing on so that for influencers that just want a one click you know if it's a banner or whatever they want or they want the code that they can put on their website that embeds their link uh, we're just trying to make it as easy as possible for the for the influencers so that as we you know go it's just as turnkey now certain influencers are going to want to just create their own custom content which is fine as long as it's you know approved and we approve it uh, we kind of have a process for that but um, it's all good so you guys can can enroll in that we're not we're not letting everybody in right now we're we're uh, basically just letting a few of our um, our key partners in so that we can keep it fairly exclusive for them to start scaling it and uh, and so we're going to do that, but we will, you can enroll as many times as you want, and then we'll start then rolling it out and, and approving everybody. So we're excited to get that going and, um, and then getting our, our partnership uh, kind of marketing going at full scale. Um, now to the development, um, you know, basically, you know, as I said, we're on track for the 
mobile app within the next two to three weeks. So by the end of July, um, but we have the basic mobile app that could go potentially go live. Um, I thought we were going to publish just the, the MVP app by the end of this month. Uh, but I know they just released another test flight today and the apps are working really well in the test flight store. So um, we might just go ahead and release that before the those two key features are, are available. Uh, QA team. So we're actually hiring a brand new QA team. We have, um, you know, the, the interesting thing about development is that generally when you have a de big development team, uh, it doesn't automatically include quality assurance. They develop, you might have bugs that slip in and it's the onus is kind of on the, the client to actually um, find and discover any bugs. And usually that's done by QA. And until now we haven't really invested in a dedicated QA team. We've just been trying to handle all of that ourselves. And, and my hat's off to you know the team because everybody's been pitching in from our, our team to go through and meticulously go through every part of the app and then report the bugs. If you as the community report a bug and want to report a bug, you find something, you can go to our devs.somisocial.com and then just click on report a bug. And that ticketing system right there on that site links right into our ticket system called ClickUp. And so as soon as you report that, you can upload an image and I believe you can upload a, a video or anything as part of the proof of, of what you found. And as long as you detail it out clearly for the developers, that'll go right into the ticket system. And the developers, we review that with our development team weekly. So that's the process that we've come up with so far, which has been pretty effective for us to squash the QA. But now we're at a point where we're just bringing on that, that dedicated team that will constantly be combing through all of the different features. And they go through and, and basically create a brand new account and go from point, you know, point A to Z all the way through the application. And they're constantly testing everything. So that's going to be great to have a, a dedicated team. Um, new partners, um, in addition to the QAs, <clears throat> we're working with a few new partners. Um, to uh, kind of speed us up, to give us a little additional horsepower on the uh, the development front. So um, we're excited. We'll we'll announce that once it's it's locked in. But we have a, a couple of new kind of partnerships on the the development front to give us extra horsepower uh, in addition to QA. And um, we've worked with our development partners. So on the insurance side. Um, to, to assure that they're hitting the deadlines. Um, we've had some, some, a little bit of obviously slippage. So we expected everything to be delivered by the 15th. And we've been meeting pretty much since then, almost on either daily or, or um, either daily or every other day, um, but at least getting daily updates from the team because there's been some slippage beyond the delivery. So we have the 15th and then the 22nd and um, the team is very close. They're not too far behind. Is that a fair assessment, Philip? I mean, they're. Yeah, they're, they're perfectly fine. We wanted to get everything out before the AMA today, but we did find about three bugs in the application when we were testing yesterday. And so they're currently fixing those. So that'll either be tonight or Monday that we get out the rest of the release. Yeah. So maybe you can talk about the future scope as well. Oh, you're doing fine. Go on, buddy. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, so we continue to work on the next few milestones for video, video uploads, short videos, as well as the rest of the site, group, company, merge, UI, update, ad share, and marketplace. So that's all on our future roadmap. And, uh, you know, we track everything in our click click up system and uh, have a backlog of items. So our strategy is basically just to continue to enhance the features and the foundation that we have now to make the app nicer and nicer. Eventually, you'll see a new UI as well. Um, we have a new UI person that we're talking to that would like to come in and, and pitch us on a new kind of UI look. So we want to take 
you know, take that into consideration because we want to always make it super simple for people to take advantage of. Um, now that we have this great foundation with A plus code, the React Native and the Symphony and the whole system is working very well and scalable. Uh, we just want to continue to make it nicer and nicer on the UI side and on the feature side. So we'll continue to enhance that. And our strategy over the next six months is to scale um, up to the, the 5 million user mark. Um, whether we can hit that or not uh, remains to be seen, but we remain pretty confident that, you know, the social graph is out there and there's billions of people online. There shouldn't be any reason why we've seen other apps that have scaled very rapidly that, you know, don't have the type of system, advanced system that we have. Um, so, and we do have a scalable system now that's web two, web three, it's sitting on a AWS hyperscale for web two and the web three, obviously plugged in as a side chain. So we don't have to rely completely on the blockchain, uh, posting on the blockchain is only every five minutes. And, um, you know, hive has been battle tested for five plus years and has three second block time. So it's um, it's a very stable system that we, we believe that we can scale very rapidly. And then um, and then we'll over the next six months scale the user base and then we'll release the ad share and inject that extra revenue stream into the platform. So we're super excited about that. Um, but we are very close. There's not much of a delay. And I know it's been a long road. I know people have been patient and we've had a couple of, not just a couple, but a number of pivots along the way that had to happen. It just, you know, you either pivot or die. And um, we made tough decisions along the way to pivot. And now we're at the point where we've, you know, brought the app, you know, back to where it should be and recoded and did the hard work to make it a plus so this is uh something we're very excited about because i think there's a really great opportunity for us to make a, a significant impact here with this application and the utility of it you know when you combine the utility with the scalability and the fact that we've tried to make it as simple as possible for users to uh, the the normies so to speak to come into the ecosystem um, those create some pretty exciting dynamics. Um, as far as the support goes, we did make the decision um, this yesterday or on Friday. Uh, yeah, it was yesterday. Uh, we we made the decision to remove the support live chat, um, you know, bubble off of the site. Uh, none of the other social media sites have a, a live chat feature, and it was covering up. I think. Um, you know, one of the new features that we've we've implemented, um, it just makes it hard, you know, when you're live streaming to have the, our chat that's right there on the live stream and then also the live chat bubble. And we're trying to just focus on simplifying as much as possible so that people avoid confusion and new people coming in um, do avoid, uh, you know, con getting confused as they as they come in. So we might add that again later. But again, we're just trying to make it really easy for people right now. So that's the development update. And that brings us to, and I know we're moving kind of quickly through our AMA today, but that's okay. Uh, gives us time to take questions. So um, let's go ahead and uh, I'll stop sharing and we can move on to the AMA segment. I wouldn't say we know we're moving quickly. We always have about 20 to 30 minutes. So we're right on track. Cool. All right. So the first question from what I see here comes from Alejandro. What is your biggest USP against potential competitors, tech or connections? Um, so I mean, is it only two tech or connections? <laughs> well, that's what he wrote. Yeah, it would be both. I mean, like, it's... I mean, I'd say I, I, I wouldn't claim to say that we're, you know, tech or connections. I think our, when you talk about our tech, I think that, yeah, I think that's, and USP is, uh, explain that acronym to me again, that the. So it, it's what makes us unique. Unique. Uh, what's the acronym? Uh, oh, acronym? I forgot what it was. I just know what it unique, means. Unique uh, service, unique service proposition or something. Um, our unique 
kind of proposition. Oh, unique selling proposition. Unique selling proposition. Okay, so like our unique selling proposition, basically, I think um, we're we're ahead of of any other project that I know of that I'm aware of because we've done so much work and we actually were building before blockchain was a thing, right? So we, we started in 2013 building social media applications and after years and years and years of development and pivots and doing different things. And then we started integrating blockchain in 2017. So we've already kind of had a jump start on that. So we've learned a lot of hard lessons that, um, I think competitors that are entering this space are still yet to learn, if not learning currently. Um, there might be one other company, one or two of them that, you know, might be kind of up there with us, but they've taken different tech, um, you know, routes. And it remains to be seen if that was, you know, the, the way to go or not. But, um, you know, I'm for every other project as well. Don't get me wrong. Like we don't really view any of these other companies in our space as competitors per se, but more of like potential partners because it's all kind of, that's kind of the, how we are in the decentralized community. You know, we're, we're with each other, but as far as unique selling proposition, I think Somi is very unique. I think we have a uh, more advanced technology stack than what I've seen others. Um, so when you look at our tech stack being a, hyperscale with blue green deployment um that's very hard to achieve that type of um level of technology not only is it expensive but it just takes a lot of work to get all those things in place and then to keep that that machine in place so like right now we're we have a hyperscale that's like a lamborghini of a network and we're driving it like a subaru so we're, we're, we're excited to, to step on the gas pedal. Right. So, but that's been, you know, configured for quite some time. It took some time to set up. And then on the web three side, I think we have something very, very unique that will um, bring a lot of value to the community as we scale those user base. That's why I said the dynamics of having scalability, stability, a simple UI and the ability to, um, you know, then put that liquidity back in the into the system and keep it sustainable is an exciting proposition and value for everybody. Um, beyond that, um, I think the team is second to none. You know, we've we've really have a, a great team of people that love the project and really just care and want to bring this to fruition. And everyone from Philip to AC to Bijo to Nick to Patrick, to, you know, everybody in our, on our development team, on the development front, everybody just loves Somi. Um, not to mention we have a new CTO that's coming on board that we hadn't mentioned, but last week we hired a new CTO that is a genius. Um, he, he's worked for um, a number of big companies. We'll be updating you on him very soon. Um, Philip will be moving to a chief operations role to where, because he touches so many areas of the operations, um, he will be moving to COO and then we're going to bring in our new, uh, our new CTO, um, who's a PhD by the way, and just a, a really wonderful person. He's going to be working closely with Philip to get up to speed on the tech side. So that's really going to be a massive thing. And he just loves so He just thinks it's cool. It's like, um, so many people do. So we, I think that's a, a, another USP is that our team is just really loving the project and really passionate about what we're, what we're all doing together. So we all really want to make this work for the community and, and bring a lot of value. Um, so I hope that answers the question. Plus, you know, let's not forget that while everybody else has been coming out with their decentralized products, we've been still here <laughs> they come they go and somi is still here <laughs> i think yeah. that's an important point that everybody should understand we, we've outlasted uh, <laughs> a lot of them that have uh that have come and gone and you know it, it it's so big it's such a big network it almost creates a defensive moat in and of itself because it's so hard to build something like this people can come with great marketing teams and they can they can talk about their great features and they can put a lot of polish on it, make it look 
so appealing and so good. Like they're just like the next big thing. And then tomorrow they're gone. Yep. So uh, we've been here for years and we're, we're going to continue to be here. All right. Next question. When will be the POAP for attending this AMA? Well, I'm actually going to talk about POAPs here because this is the first time this question has come up. But cool. if you guys don't know what POAPs are, they're, they're unique little badges or unique little NFTs that you can share that says you are part of something. So that's proof of participation, if you want to call it. Yeah. That. And there was a big push. I think it was like three years ago. Uh, three to five years ago, there was a huge push to get POAPs into the decentralized space. There was a POP, POAP standard that was created. Um, but one thing that actually happened with that whole standard is it was, was eventually abandoned by the community. So POAPs are just not that big these days. So we do have a partnership um, with the main POAP team that that created the actual framework. And we are going to be, you know, trying to resurrect that framework for the entire decentralized community. But right now we have no POAPs, except if there's like a major community vote and stuff like that. So I want to do a Pope for us, but you know, it's rather low priority as the community doesn't really do Popes these days. Pope we can also launch just gave you a hint of a partnership that we haven't announced. Literally, oh, to give hints. You just have to Google, that's it. I don't care. I'm allowed to give hints. Moving on. <laughs> you want to talk about that, Chris? No. Uh, I'm, I am was going to type, but okay, whatever. Um, when the GoFundMe NFT. When are we going to give people their NFTs? Um, we, we should give them their NFTs. I've been saying that that needs to be done first because um, we have those NFTs ready. And everybody was talking about it. And then we got every, all the NFTs ready and then we didn't give them out. I think we just need to mint them. Um, I don't know, Philip, if you could mint those this week, but we, we need to give the GoFundMe people their NFTs and then get ready to start delivering the Republic NFTs because those are like the next in line. And, and, and Neftix is there and ready. We haven't been talking about it too much because we built it. We got it connected. We got everything kind of going very well. And it's a very nice NFT uh, application. So um, we, we do want to show it some love, but we want to launch our, our collectibles through there and get it going. So I don't know if we can if we can do that this week, at least knock that out. But if Philip says he can do it, then I say let's do it. But he will be with our new CTO this week and he might not have time to do it this week. If he doesn't have time, um i wrote this or next this or next okay okay so there you have it this week or next week we will get those gofundme nfts out to the community and that's philip's word on it oh great make me the bad guy <laughs> All right. so next question from j10 have you seen a significant increase in signups for somi as a result of the crypto magazine article what have you seen, uh, Philip? Because I know I, I had asked you for the cloud front this week. We were going to update this today, but we didn't. I never. I know we didn't. We didn't get to it. I know you asked me for the cloud front stats, but I haven't checked out user stats yet. Okay. I have honestly didn't yeah. even track whether or not we got new signups after the magazine, so I have no idea. What we're doing is we're building. We have a dashboard that the team has been building, and the dashboard is nearly getting ready um, and in the dashboard it tracks on a daily basis signups everything right yeah. i mean it has all of our stats so we're basically connecting that but until then we have to like go manually go in and, re and pull these reports but let us pull that report jet and uh because that's a good point like what happened as a result and, and we, i don't think we've really felt the impact of the magazine yet i don't think we can say because it just got distributed the first copy it, it had massive sales so we know that we're getting exposure but how that translates into new signups i think we we will be tracking that over the next you know um several months if not longer because we'll be continually featured as well in that magazine but it's something that we really should be tracking as the old peter drucker would say you move what you measure well, and, uh, you know, we want to measure, be measuring those, those stats very closely on a daily it's, basis. It's also important to say that um, with marketing, repetition is what matters. And the more that 
your brand is out there to people, um, the more they see it, the more enticed they'll be to sign on. So, I mean, you know, this is really more about awareness um, than getting signups um, in, in the magazine. I mean, we'll get a few thousand probably, but regardless, I mean, it's more important to get the brand out there. Um, it's true. I agree with you. I mean, we, we want signups, but honestly, our signups will start coming as soon as we tell our partners, our massive partners and our massive influencers go. <laughs> when we say go, the we expect floodgates. And that's, yeah. that's why we're not like, oh, you know, how, how many signups do we get from the magazine? It's not kind of like we don't have that sense of urgency because we have all these things waiting in the wings. And we've just been telling everybody to wait because... We don't want to market an app that's not ready, that doesn't have the features and the work, the, the user flow yet that's refined. Of course not. Uh, we're close to that. We're close to that. And then we're going to say go, and then we expect floodgates, and then we'll be reporting to you guys those numbers. Yeah, and then everybody will actually realize, uh, you know, this is a legitimate project with all the people that have put out some... I, I think videos. they realize it's a legitimate project. I just think that people... Um, you know, are tired of waiting. And I understand that. And I am too. I mean, nobody's, um, well, you've been here you know, for what? 10 years. I've well, yeah, I've been, I've been working it for 10 years and started the company and, and, you know, got it going. But the, the first four years were just a grind of 20 hours a day, seven days a week. I would scrum teams overseas because we had development teams that didn't deliver in the U S and, they were super expensive and we had to just bootstrap along. And that, that was the problem with, with that is that on the development side, a lot of develop development companies will just, you know, take advantage of founders, especially if they don't have the deep experience of the code level. And that's what I ran into for the first four years when we built two different systems, but the second system was pretty nice that we built. It just would never scale like we have now. And, um, you know, then we pivoted in, in 2017 into blockchain and that was a game changer. So from 2013 to 2017, it was, you know, it was pretty brutal. And uh, I'll be honest, you know, there was a point where I, I didn't think we were going to make it because I cut every expense in the world and I was down to $50 in my business account. And I told my now wife, I'm like, you know, I'll go look for a job on Monday. It just nobody's going to give us money. This isn't going to work. You know, we can't make it because it's just this system isn't going to scale as it is. And investors looking into it or people who are savvy about code, they just know it's not going to happen. But by some miracle, things Sasha. just <laughs> you know, Sasha Sasha day game. I, I had reached out to Sasha Day Game the other day and said, Hey, we want to have you featured on our, on our, one of our AMAs because, you know, he was there and he actually said, Hey, have you guys thought of this? And he basically encouraged us to pivot into blockchain and it was a game changer for us. And also it was something that really um, went hand in hand with what we're trying to do. And so, you know, I would say just, you know, for other entrepreneurs out there, don't give up. You just have to be creative and just keep, pushing and keep if you keep pursuing the goal it just inevitably something will open up and and a door or a window or whatever to, to crawl through connections it. yeah it, it just it's it's what just it interesting how it happens so but you know here we are today and i understand that you know nobody understands better than me the the fact that we want to get it going but we are legitimate it's not a rug pull it's not you know if we would have been a rug if we would have rugged long long ago no yeah and yeah we, we wouldn't be here pouring for money for back in the infrastructure. you know it just doesn't make sense but you know the legitimacy will will come and we believe wholeheartedly that our partners love what we're doing too that's why they've signed up and some of these big partnerships and influencers but it's just that we can't tell them to go we want them to wait until we had prepared everything the proper way and we're, we're very close to that now. It's just a matter of, you know, days really where we have something ready and, and, you know, we're not going to open, you know, the floodgates immediately. You know, we want to make sure that we, you know, we also, 
yeah, we just kind of pull it open and say, okay, say, okay, this is this is working good. Now let's let's go, you know, full full force. So, but we're, you know, we have a system that can handle it, and we're super excited about that. Yeah. So just to answer your previous question, Chris, you know, our previous report showed three and a half million requests over 14 days. Now we're up to six and a half million requests over the last 15 days. So we've pretty much doubled in traffic, averaging about 317,000 per day. Okay. Which so, is great. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's good. I mean, that's good, uh, good stats that we've actually doubled, you know, and we're, so we're kind of back, um, to I guess we're not quite back to where we were last year because we were no not million. yet we were two million per day last year two million per day last year that's when we blew out the blockchain and it, and it wouldn't work and we ran into all those problems but we're getting there and the traffic's really increasing the activity um, and it'll just go up from here so that was you said that was six million six and a half eight. over the last fifteen days yeah six and a half over the last fifteen okay cool so. Which is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's getting up there. Any other so questions? Because we've kind of cleared them all out. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, no. I mean, I've, I think. I've got a question, yeah. and it's not related to Somi. It's related to Dom's launch of his project. When is yeah, he doing. He's not today. When is he doing. Are you meeting with him today? Uh, we don't have a meeting with him today. We have a meeting with him on, I believe it's Tuesday or Wednesday. And when it comes to Dom's project, we're doing a phased out release with him. So there will be a pre-sale coming up in July, but we've got a few competitions that are coming out before that. And we're timing um, the release of the competitions with the release of the NFT project, because we want to make sure that the people competing in the competition um, are also going to be rewarded with, with the NFTs that they get for the competition. So we don't have exact dates right now, but um, you know, well, continue looking at the website because we'll be updating it next week. Well, he said, he said July 17th pre-sale. Well, that's what our goal is going to be. But like I said, there's new information that just came out with us. What? Three days ago, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. There's, he, he just gave us a, a new update and, um, there's a lot of exciting things coming. It's just that they're working with some new brands and some new new people that are actually doing these live events and they want to coordinate with everything in the way that they're rolling it out. So we're with them. I mean, if, for if those who don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about Spaced Out Cadets and you can take a look at the project spacedoutcadets.com. And well, it's basically just, one of the NFT projects. I was just wondering um, how do you because he, he he hasn't put out the, the whitelist for the whitelist uh join the discord no i've already so i've been can, in there since since when he said originally that the first 20 people you know would would get a whitelist spot um so oh, okay. if you're in there yeah. then you're on there yeah i think you're probably whitelisted then if you already joined the, but the discord. he never asked for he never asked for a uh address that's what i'm asking like he will. The new will. process for whitelist is not to ask for address until we're ready to do the pre-sale. And there's a reason for that. Security is a huge thing in the Ethereum space right now. And when people try to do wallet-based whitelists, it detracts a lot from people signing up. So for all those people that are part of the Spaced Out Cadets whitelist, you know, the first two, 300 people that actually joined, you guys will all be contacted. Uh, individually on Discord, and then you'll fill out a form with your wallet address so that we can actually invite you to the pre-sale. We do not ask for it at the beginning, Aaron, because we don't want people releasing information until it's needed. Interesting. Yeah, so. it's an interesting way of doing it, though, because if you're you, if you're saying you're going to DM people, then you're you're then opening people up to potentially get get. Scam. I, I don't think they're going to. That, that doesn't mean they're going to DM. It doesn't mean they're going to DM. Well, that's what, that's what Philip just said. He said that, that, that people would DM you. I didn't I just, say DM. But that's okay. This is a conversation for a different channel and a different thing. It's not how we're doing the whitelist, and we will contact the people on the whitelist so that they can actually join the pre-sale. But that's a conversation for a different project, not for this one. Yeah, there will be instructions in the Spaced Out Cadets channel. But for those who don't know what we're talking about, uh, Dominique Columbus, who's an actor and influencer, uh, we've been working with him um, on the Spaced Out Cadets. And this was part of our Neftix initiative that we built the, the, the NFT platform 
but also at the same time, we developed something very special for him as far as a drop and an NFT drop. And we really wanted to focus on the utility of his project and make sure that everything's in place. And he has a ton of partnerships and, you know, the real application is helping kids get into gaming. And they're doing these workshops that are amazing for kids. They're partnering with LA, LA Weekly and other brands and other, um, you know, companies that are coming in as sponsors and they're bringing in all these different influencers and they're getting the kids really activated at a young age to be able to become professional gamers. And that's the whole thing. And the, the Spaced Out Cadets NFT will be a driver for this entire community and the utility. And we have plans on having that integrated into Somi at some point um, because that's that will be you know extra utility and it's going to be exciting for um, that and, you know, empowering that community as well. So it's, it's a great partnership and you guys should check it out, but thank you everybody so much for uh, being here on our AMA today. Uh, appreciate everybody. I didn't have a chance to see all the chats, um, but yeah, let's see if we missed anything here. Dennis is great question. Can you add that to questions? Uh, have you seen a significant increase in signups? Yep, okay. That was Dennis. That one. Thanks Dennis. Um, yeah, we and so we've answered all the questions. I think we, yeah. So we're going to be, I think, right on time or a little bit early today. Five minutes, five minutes to spare. Unless anybody wants to talk for five minutes, we're good. Yeah, I'm sure uh, I can talk I, for five minutes, but you know, I'm sure you can. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, AC, uh, for being here today. Thanks, Philip, and I want to thank the community. You guys have been great, and we will. Be updating you shortly on the um, on the progress of the developers. They're going to give us an update even later today. So uh, once we have that push into production, we'll let you guys know. That's the next thing, and then you'll be able to uh, go in and see all of those uh, those new updates. So uh, appreciate everybody being here today. Three more minutes, Chris. Come on, come on. <laughs> Three, more. Three more. It's still four. <laughs> It says 57 on my, my screen. That's only 26 now. Yeah. Yeah, shoot. Four minutes to go. Hmm. You guys want to talk about something for four minutes? Four minutes. What do we do? Anything, anything happening? Oh, what about the... Uh, you know what I was watching this morning was the Senate hearing um, where they were talking about, uh, you know, the crypto industry and the new regulation and... Uh, who was it? it? Was Charles Hoskinson was there? From yeah, Cardano. Yeah, Charles. Charles. And I was pretty impressed. Uh, you know, Charles. They put him on the spot because he had like 26 seconds to go, and he's like, "Well, with 26 seconds," and then the the chair gave him, you know, pretty much, you know, free reign to go on. But you know, the thing I love about Charles, the guy is just genius, and he he even crushed it in just under a minute. I mean, you think he just rattled off these things but when he talks he's very concise and um he's got a lot of good ideas for the for the crypto you know regulatory body so i thought that was cool that he could you know i know not everybody's a fan but you know, not, everybody, <laughs> not everybody can that's be, an you know, understatement <laughs> but uh, but i think charles you know whether you love him or hate him i think he's a super intelligent guy and um so I'm glad that he was he was able to speak over there, uh, but that's that's my two cents. I don't know. That was my what two minutes. I don't of, think Charles. Uh, yeah, we still have three minutes awesome. left. That was your 45 <laughs> seconds, man. Good job. What do you guys? What do you guys got? What do you guys uh, got? So I, I don't think Charles is fully responsible for uh, the slow rollout of Cardano. So, I mean, it, people can be mad at him for it or whatever, I mean, but it's, it is what it is. I mean, they're working yeah. on a, they're working on a strategic scientific pr approach where they're every single update that they peer through, they're doing peer yeah, reviews and everything. Thorough. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. I understand the, the methodology behind it. So. What I like is that, you know, <clears throat> that's going to sound weird. I like that Bitcoin crashed. Is that a weird thing to say? <laughs> 
I kind of like that the Fed increased the the rates that we have here and Bitcoin's being tested and all that good stuff because, you know, from a technology standpoint, we get to see how robust both of the networks are, you know, Ethereum and, and Bitcoin. And we get to see, you know, how they actually deal with the, the federal rate increases and all that good stuff. But on the plus side of it, there is a plus side to all this crashing. If you guys ever wanted a new video card, you can probably get one now because most of the miners are dumping their GPUs. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. The vast no, majority right, of Bitcoin right. and Ethereum miners are not buying GPUs anymore. So there's plenty for the rest of us. <laughs> no, yeah, there you yeah, have no, you're right. There you have it, people. Go get your GPUs. For the longest, for the longest time, for the longest time, they've been so overpriced because the supply like has been short because of miners have been buying them all. And then now, yeah, the, the prices have gone way down for uh, GPUs. And that's not, you know, it's not just GPUs. It's also car parts. And, you know, there was a, uh, I just got given, as you guys know, the, the APAP machine for my breathing. And I had to get the older one because the newer one that's automatically wireless, updates all the data to my doctor, isn't available because they don't have the the chips for it right now. But the good thing is with all these miners and things like that, you know, not putting such a strain on the chip market, I get my new one coming next week. So, I mean, before that, it was like a six month wait. Now it's like a, a week wait. So, I mean, for the market, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, man. That's amazing. Well, hey, we've made it to 11.30. We've made it to 11.30. <laughs> 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 Thank you for that. I'm glad we could end on a good note and uh, a nice positive thing. So, hey, guys, have a great day. Enjoy the weekend. and We'll have updates for you shortly.